Namaste my fellow strikers, Holy Materia here, back with another Shinobi Striker video. Today we're going to be talking about how to play healer in combat. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is an updated version for my beginner's guide on how to play healer. Uh, this time we'll be updating things. Uh, so yeah, so there's been some meta changes since then. Uh, lots of new DLC has come out. Uh, but most of what I said in there still holds true. But whatever is different in this one, we'll, you'll, you'll just take this one as the, as the updated version. So when you're playing healer in combat and you're the only healer on your team, uh, the biggest thing is that you need to heal your teammates. Like I know this sounds obvious, uh, like I said in the last video, but I've come into so many matches where there's one healer on our team and that healer has absolutely no way to heal us. They're just running a full combat healer build and they have no way to heal their teammates. Uh, so the, the biggest thing is that you need to be able to heal your teammates and not just be able to heal, not just have like a single healing uh, jutsu, but you should have multiple ways to heal your teammates. So like at least one healing jutsu and like the healing seal, maybe even an ult that can heal also. But we'll talk more about the builds later. Uh, but yeah, your biggest priority is healing. Uh, don't worry about how many kills you have. D don't worry about how much damage you're doing. Your first priority is to keep your teammates healed and then you can go and uh, try to like help with the fighting after after you make sure your teammates are all okay so one of your biggest priorities is to keep yourself alive so as a healer it's important to heal your teammates but you can't do that if you're dead yourself and once the healer dies it becomes incredibly easy to kill all their other teammates so making sure you stay alive is your number one priority so that you can help your teammates stay alive and it might sound selfish, but sometimes that means that you have to sacrifice a teammate. Uh, so to go along with that, uh, don't follow strays and uh, make sure you stay with the group. So sometimes you might see a teammate like off in the distance uh, getting jumped and you see their HP going down and you're like, oh, I'm the healer. I got to go heal them. Uh, but you don't want to go to get yourself into that situation and leave the rest of your teammates and try to go save that one person who, who went rogue. And so because by the time you get there, they're probably either going to be dead or you won't be able to out heal the damage they're taking, especially if they're getting jumped. So then what will happen is that they get killed and then you're there by yourself and then you get jumped and you get killed. And then your other two teammates are going to end up dying, too, because they don't have a healer. And and now it's like a 4v2. So so sometimes you have to see like what your priorities are. Don't just go after one person because really your teammates should be coming to you to get healed. Uh, you shouldn't be chasing your teammates around. Like they should be the group up emote. That's your best friend. Uh, just just spam group up if your teammates are are getting too far away from you it's, uh, instead of instead of trying to chase them down. Uh, let them come to you. So to go along with that, use the healing seal because that's one of the things that will help you to stay alive the most. It's probably, to me, it's the best ninja tool in the whole game, not just for healers, but for any of the classes. It's the most OP thing there is because it's basically like having a second healing ninjutsu. Uh, it has good range, it, it does a decent amount of healing, and it comes back faster than most of the healing ninjutsu. And you can also use it faster than things like cellular extraction uh, because you can get killed while you're trying to use cellular extraction because it takes so long to activate after you hit the button. But the healing seal comes out like as soon as you press it. So you can use that to keep yourself alive and to get more distance uh, once you once you get yourself a little bit of heals. Uh, so, so yeah, definitely use the healing seal and then know how to move so that's a big thing that's probably the, the the first thing that's the first thing i tell every shinobi striker player no matter what class they're playing when people ask me for advice uh know how to move advanced movement is the thing that separates new players from advanced players uh, but it's especially important for healers because if you're playing healer you're going to be getting jumped and targeted all the time so just just prepare for that uh just mentally prepare to get jumped because that's just going to happen and you just gotta you know just be okay with it and, and and just roll with those punches but if you know how to move then getting jumped won't be as big a deal because they won't be able to catch you and you'll be able to out heal the, the little bit of damage that you're taking while you're moving uh, using those advanced movement techniques and and uh, on top of that so like once your opponents see that you're really good at moving they won't be as likely to target you anymore because it's very it's very difficult to kill a healer that has good movement and who has at least a few ways to heal themselves and their teammates once you know how to move you won't become as much of a target and to go along with that you want to always be on the move like don't stay still ever as a healer always be moving and try to stay above the fight like that means like 
running on walls or on top of buildings or on the side of buildings or like going around pillars and trees and things like that like kind of like out of sight out of mind so that nobody really notices where you are or even like they might be looking for you but they're like where's that healer like they i see his teammates getting healed but i can't find that healer so like just try to stay above the above the mat so that yeah so that nobody can really target you or or really notice you okay so now let's talk a little bit about build so we already talked about like this isn't a build video i'm not going to just give you like a single build and be like this is the best healer build there's there's no like best builds there's builds that can work for you and builds that don't work for you uh, so I want to help you construct a build that will work good for you. So first we talked about the healing seal. I personally think that's the best ninja tool in the game. You can use, if you're still having a hard time like keeping people off you, you can use like kunai or you can use the seal like to keep people off you. And that one's actually alright too, but if you're like trying to be a healer healer, I suggest using the, the healing seal. Or you can use the one that does healing over time, but I think that the healing seal is better though. Pretty much in combat, cellular extraction is a must. If, you, if you're not running cellular extraction, then you're kind of like putting your team at a disadvantage because it's the best healing jutsu in the game. There's, it's been out since the game came out and it's still meta and it, there's nothing, there's no healing move that's, that's out doing cellular extraction. So that's like kind of like a locked in spot uh, for the ninjutsu, but the second ninjutsu is up to you and your play style. Uh, so like before I used to like to run triple heals so I would have a my healing seal, cellular extraction and another healing jutsu like palm sage. Uh, you can do that. It's a it's an okay build if you if you really want to be like a pure healer, but you can also run like a, another support move. So something like uh, super light and boulder and in my last video super light and boulder was not very good at the time, but now it's been buffed and it's one of the best moves in the game. It provides so much support for your team. Not only does it buff everybody's action speed, so like their their speed, their their jumping, their attack tracking, attack tracking distance. Uh, it makes it so it buffs your team to to be better at fighting, but it also gives them alt charge, uh, and it's crucial. Like it, it, your alt will charge so fast when you're using this move consistently. And make sure you pop it at the very beginning of the match too, like while you're still in your spawn. Because by the time, because that will, that even though the effects will be gone by the time the fight starts, all your teammates will still get that alt charge. So you want to be using that move. Like as soon as you can get it to the most teammates, uh, use it like over and over. Uh, don't don't hold on to it unless you get the spam scroll, the blue, the scroll that turns you light blue. Don't use a super light and boulder because it'll erase the effects of the spam scroll. Uh, so that's the only time you really want to hold on to it. Uh, but you can also use a more offensive move like air palm has always been good weighted boulder or even the super weighted boulder where you can do it in an area effect if you want to be if you want to be like more of a hybrid healer uh you can you can use something like that and then another good one especially if you're running solo and <laughs> you're getting jumped all the time is the true seeker orbs uh, because that will keep people off of you and it also is like not only does it does it work to get people off of you like when you use it but it, it also changes your opponent's mentality because they're now the, all of a sudden the healer is not somebody that I can just go beat up. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the healer is not somebody that you can just beat up on anymore once the, somebody sees that you have the true seeker orbs. Uh, because that move is crucial to get hit by and it, it is, it's got such good uh, defense and there's still not that many moves that can counter it. And most of the time in combat, people aren't running those moves that counter it anyway. So, uh, so yeah, that's a super good move, especially if you're solo queuing, uh, just to get pe just to keep people away from you and to change like their mentality when it comes to how they think about the healer on the other team. Uh, but yeah, so the second jutsu is definitely up to you and your play style. But I would I would suggest running at least cellular extraction and probably the healing seal. And then as for alts, that's uh, that's also like up to you. So healers have a lot of good alts now, especially since that last video. Tsunade's ult is still meta, the long distance healing with the slugs, because it gives so much alt charge to you and your teammates, and uh, and it, and it uh, heals over time, which is good. But it's mostly about getting that alt charge, uh, because if you just wanted something to heal yourself and your teammates, then Mitotic Regeneration heals you completely now, and they it just got buffed so that the it takes less alt charge to get it so you can get it even faster than you could before and it revives teammates but that's not really helpful in combat uh, but probably the best alt is naruto last battles the massive rasen shuriken it has so much utility it's a one shot it has crazy tracking it's huge it covers so much space uh, so it's basically like a guaranteed hit to at least kill one person and not only that but it revives your teammates it heals your teammates over time it gives them back their ninjutsu it just does so many things in one 
that it's just almost inarguably the best move in the game. But if you're on a, on a coordinated team, Tsunade's ult is probably better because the ults are so important. But if you're running solo, then I'd suggest Massive Rust Sang Shuriken because it also gets people off of you. Like you can't get hit while you're doing it. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a really good ult. So super OP. They still haven't debuffed it. I'm surprised because it's it needs to it needs to be nerfed really to be honest. Even though I'm a healer, a healer is one of my main classes. But yeah. Uh, so yeah that move is still super good uh sleep is still super meta feather illusion especially on pitfall maps if you're running solo i'd suggest using that on pitfall maps but if you're in a coordinated team you can use that on any map uh, as long as you guys are coordinating your ultimates and if you're like a new player and you're playing on a non-pitfall map maze alt can be decent um like all you got to do is get people like about half health and then pop that on them and they and hit them a few times and they won't be able to get away from it but because of some of the new alts that have come out that move's not as good as it was when i made the last video that used to be my main uh, one of my main uh healer alts but yeah there's other stuff that's better now okay so the weapon is up to your preference and what type of healer you're playing as uh, so i personally prefer the sakura naginata but that's definitely not the best weapon for fighting so if you're playing as like a hybrid healer where you want to heal your teammates and also be able to do damage and like get people in combos and stuff just the regular healer weapon is probably the best one for fighting. And that also includes like the Nine Tails sword, the Tachi sword, Tobirama, all the ones that have like the same stats as the regular sword. But the Sakura Naginata is better for like movement. Yeah, it's better for just like getting around the map with. Uh, so I prefer that over the regular healing sword or any of those uh, other ones that are similar to it. Now let's talk a little bit about the clothing perks. So I pretty much run the same clothing perks on my healer, no matter what my build is on combat. So I use first blood so that my ultimate charges faster, and then armed and dangerous so that my ninja tool charges faster, and in a bind so that if I get if my health drops below a certain point, then my ninjutsu will charge extremely fast. Uh, so if you notice, all of my all of my things are about time because making your cooldowns lower is crucial for healers because because you're getting jumped all the time you need like all your stuff as fast as you can get it and especially if you're running the healing seal then armed and dangerous is is best uh, for the bottom so that you can get that back uh, even faster than it already comes back because that's going to be your best friend uh, but if you're running a different ninja tool then i would suggest using clear mind so that you get your healing ninjutsu back faster and running first blood with the super light and boulder jutsu makes me get my ultimate at least three times a match even when i have like the slow charging ult like massive rusting shuriken but when i have an ult that charges quickly normally like solid fog i get that at least four times a match with the combination of first blood and super light and boulder jutsu uh, some people like to run master of medicine so that they get more heals with the, every time they heal but the thing is, is that that only heals yourself not your teammates but some people argue that because you are getting so much more heals your your ultimate ends up charging faster anyway and plus you're getting more heals so there's no real point for the ultimate charge one but i don't get enough healing for myself to for that to affect my ult so much so because it doesn't help my teammates i don't really use that one and you can also use the accessory that gives you health back every time you get a kill if you're more of like a hybrid healer where you're actually trying to get kills but just remember that you only get that health back when you get the finishing blow not just like because the ko comes up on your screen uh, so i don't really use that too much when i'm playing healer unless i'm in the pit uh, so yeah that's about it for uh, how to play healer in combat so yeah let's just uh just to sum it up Make sure you're healing your teammates, you have at least a few ways to heal your team. Uh, stay alive, keeping yourself alive is the number one priority. Uh, don't follow your, your rogue teammates who go off too far by themselves. If they die, they die, that's on them because they didn't stick with the healer. Use the healing seal, that's going to be on every one of these every one of these i'm going to say to use the healing seal for for base flag all of it uh know how to move master that advanced movement uh you can watch my advanced movement video or check out somebody else's there's lots of people that have advanced movement guides um on shinobi striker and uh yeah keep moving never stay still stay up uh, stay above the fight uh make sure you're like in areas where people aren't really able to see you very well and yeah the build's up to you but i'd suggest cellular extraction at least and then, uh, yeah, there's lots of different alts you can use that are uh, viable in combat matches for healers. So yeah, guys, that's all I got for this one. I'll have the flag and the base guide soon, and then we'll and then we'll go to range types, and we'll do all the types and all the different uh, main game modes like combat, flag, and base. Uh, so basically, all the game modes that are in Ninja World League, we'll we'll cover that uh, for each class. 
So after we're done with the healer, we'll do range, and then we'll go to defense, and then attack. If I, if I'm confident enough to do these for attack. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one. Everybody, stay safe out there. Peace and love.